What's up everybody? It's your friend Ricky the Realtor here with Boulevard Real Estate and welcome back. This is episode 15. Yes, episode 15 of Raw and Uncut Real Estate. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you once again and we're going to dive right into it. So we've been seeing a lot of people removing contingencies and a lot of my clients and a lot of people out there are probably like, what the hell does that mean? So we're going to talk a little bit about what those contingencies are and what it means to remove them really quick. So you guys get an idea of, of what exactly these people are doing, why they're doing it, and see if maybe it makes sense for you to do it. I myself never ever um, will advise my clients to remove any contingency unless they are very comfortable doing so or unless it's an extraordinary circumstance. So let's dive right, in, right into it. There's a few contingencies throughout the contract, the purchase contract, all depends on the property and the contract itself. But there's three we need to talk about, and those three are the loan contingency, the appraisal contingency, and the inspection contingency. So the loan contingency pretty much means that once you're accepted, you have anywhere between a week to a week and a half, uh, maybe sometimes two weeks, depending on how much time you need. That all can be addressed in the contract to finalize your loan, submit it to underwriting, make sure you get a final, um, pretty much a final underwritten approval to go ahead and move forward and close on the house. So if you've already spoken with the lender, you've been pre-underwritten, you've been working with this lender for a while, they may be able to get you that final underwritten approval before entering contract. And many times it's safe to remove that, that uh, excuse me, that loan contingency because it still will be based on an appraisal contingency if you need an appraisal. The appraisal contingency means that the bank is gonna send a third party, someone to go out and verify that particular offer price to make sure that any other buyer is willing to offer that same amount, you can keep or remove your appraisal contingency if, in fact, your loan allows you to do so. FHA, government-sponsored loans, will not allow you to do that. Conventional, you may get a waiver, and that will be totally based on the lender if they can get you a waiver for the appraisal. If you have a substantial amount of down payment, your down payment can also offset any uh, discrepancies in the price uh, as far as the, the appraised value, I would say if there's a discrepancy there, your down payment can take care of the balance and only increase your monthly payment by a little bit. So um, those are creative ways that you can remove your appraisal contingency. Like I said, FHA government sponsored loans will not allow you to do this. Conventional will, if in fact you're okay with paying that price and are willing to make uh, make and take a risk pretty much. So that's what that means to remove your, uh, your inspection. Um, no appraisal and loan inspection is what we're going to talk about next. So an, an inspection contingency is very, very important. You want to make sure that you have an inspection contingency in place because you want to make sure that there's no leaks, that there's nothing going on in the roof, the foundation, sewer, etc. And if you remove that inspection contingency, that means you can go ahead and still do those inspections, but you're waiving your right to do any requests for repairs or ask for anything. Um, and it will be solely based on the appraisal or loan if you are still leaving those contingencies in there. The only time I will recommend to remove an, an inspection contingency if the home is brand new, you know who the house is from, is, is if it's your family's house, stuff like that. That's the only time I would ever say you can go ahead and remove your inspection contingency. But I recommend you keep all contingencies in place. You want to make sure you're covering your basis. You want to make sure that not only that, that you're comfortable with the decision that you're making. I don't ever recommend first-time home buyers remove any of those contingencies because it's peace of mind. You want to make sure that you pretty much hit all those contingencies, check all those boxes off so you guys can go ahead and remove all contingencies when you're ready to at the very end so you can go ahead and close on the property. But some folks are doing that, being very aggressive when they're out there writing offers. They're removing their loan because they don't need to get qualified. They're removing their appraisal because they're okay paying the price. And inspections, they're just taking the house as is, so they're willing to do that. But my recommendation is keep them all in there, peace of mind, make sure the house is sound, it appraises, you get your loan qualified, and you're ready to go. So those are three checkpoints in the transaction, and the purchase contract also will be addressed the times that it will take you to complete those, those contingencies. But my recommendation, keep them in, peace of mind, make sure that you're, uh, it's transparent, that you're comfortable, and that you can sleep easy at night. But if you're willing to take a risk, talk to your realtor, talk to myself if you're working with me, and let's strategize and talk about the best game plan and the best offer that we can make to get you that house. So it was a pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you so much. If you guys need any clarification, 
shoot me a call, message. I'm happy to go over it with you guys. It was a pleasure talking to you and I look forward to working with all my past, present, and future clients. Thank you so much. Take care and thanks for joining us on Raw and Uncut Real Estate episode number 15.